Robert, uh, which is kind of interesting when you consider where we've been over the last few years with electric cars and all that goes with it and electric vehicles and the like. Um, motorists are going to be forced to pay more money, apparently. Electric car owners could be splashing out hundreds of pounds more on car fees because of the costly VAT charging fees. Now, there's all sorts of other elements about road tax eventually coming onto EVs as well. But let's have a listen to Rishi Sunak speaking about putting a hold on the electric car rollout. So to give us more time to prepare, I'm announcing today that we're going to ease the transition to electric vehicles. You'll still be able to buy petrol and diesel cars and vans until 2035. Till 2030. Well, there it is, Robert. I mean, big obviously um, effort to try and get everybody converting to electric but this thing doesn't come cheap the vehicle itself is pretty pricey we now know that charging it in some cases can be as much as using petrol and possibly road tax well you just know it is just around the corner yeah and those of us who have looked into buying a, a, a new car or a second-hand car anytime recently will have done the maths and quite a few people will, as I found out, discovered that buying an electric car is actually the more expensive option. So if the government is serious about getting people and incentivizing people to go electric, I'm not sure it's going about it the right way. And this latest news about VAT on charging away from your home is just even more expense. So I, th I don't think it's going the way that uh, the net zero people would like it to go. Well, recent research put the average difference between public and private charging costs at around 92 to 138 pounds per month. I mean, this is an extraordinary difference. And of course, you can charge at home to a degree. And they always came, most journeys are made, what, you know, two miles from around the home or something. But I think a lot of people travel around the country. They travel around their county. They travel around their town. They can't always charge from home. Well, absolutely. And even if they do charge from home, I think just uh, erecting one of those charging points, that isn't cheap either. So the expense builds and builds. And it really is no surprise that Rishi Sunak puts the deadline back to 2035. What will Keir Starmer do about that in mm. a couple of weeks' time? That will be interesting. Because I don't think you can pull it back forward to 2030 now. I, yeah, indeed. We're going to watch with interest on that one. couple more stories to look at. The police chief who's been sacked after being found guilty of gross misconduct over lying about his military record. This is Nick Adley, now former chief constable of Northamptonshire Police. Um, it's it, it sort of every now and you see a story every now and again and you just think, what the hell was he thinking? And this was a man wearing a Falklands medal even though he would have been 15 when the Falklands War was going on. Uh, but he'd had this kind of almost water mitty like invention of his military career, and now he's been sacked. What a stupid, fundamental schoolboy error, Robert. Well, and Ian, I can tell you, I've had the privilege of travelling to the Falkland Islands uh, four or five times in the last decade and seeing the graveyards of British soldiers and Argentinian soldiers but obviously the ones I was really noticing were the British soldiers who went down there, gave their lives for the freedom of those Falkland Islanders. They're yep. still remembered now. The Falkland Islanders are so grateful for the lives that were given by that task force in 1982. And for some police officer to pretend he was there when he wasn't, of all the stories I've seen today, that one disgusts me the most. Yeah, and I think there were other things, he, and he was wearing this big, you know, lapel of medals and, and, and accolades. And, you know, they, th this hearing, they, they said, you know, the lies just kept coming out of his mouth. The panel said his audacity uh, was staggering, adding that he had lied over many years with arrogant temerity. I mean, this is pretty damning stuff. You know, there's a little bit of me, a little bit of me that feels a bit sorry for the bloke in the sense that he did 32 years, 32 years in the police force. I don't know what effect this has on his pension and things like that, but what a disgraceful way to end what, other than this, apparently had been a pretty good career. And God knows what his friends and his family, I don't know if he has children, what they think oh. about this. I mean, what, what an awful, what an awful humiliation for yeah. someone, as you say, towards the end of their career. It's disgusting. I'm afraid he, he, he's, he, he's 
got what is coming to him. I mean, you can't, he couldn't walk in the local pub, could he, without somebody just saying, well, you just come back from Ukraine, have you, mate? Yeah, been out there blasting him away, the old Russians, single-handedly. It's kind of that territory. It's massively humiliating. I'm sure he had conjured up a, a slightly more digestible response to it all. But nonetheless, he's now gone. And, and you know, sadly, rightly so. It's about integrity in high office. Uh, and just finally, Booking.com are warning that AI is driving an explosion of travel scams. Let's have a listen to Simon Calder explaining what is going on when he spoke to Mike Graham earlier today. Effectively, these uh, organisations, these villains are setting up all kinds of scams. They're going after property owners to try and get their details. They're then contacting individual um, people who've booked and you know, they're being told typically, oh, why don't you um, send us uh, some money um, not on the booking platform and that way we'll both save and we'll split the difference. Anybody who does that is absolutely guaranteed to be handing over their hard earned cash to a scammer. Yeah, I mean, this is in some respects, you know, scamming people over the travel in, in, in the travel world is not entirely new, Robert. You know, people who've booked that lovely cottage down there in Devon only to discover that no such cottage exists or it does exist. But it actually is a nice family living in there um, and was never up for rent, that kind of stuff. But I suppose AI is accelerating the potential of getting scammed. Yeah, I think with AI, I'm not an expert in it, but I've spoken to a lot of people about it. AI has tremendous opportunities for all industries around the world to make us more efficient and effective. It will do great things for our health service here in the UK, but there are tremendous risks as well. And what we've got to get right is that balance between risk and reward. And it's going to be a very difficult balance to strike as the years go by. Yeah, we're well, what with interest. Robert, as ever, have a great weekend. 